Kia ora, good evening. Maritime New Zealand is on high alert after a giant cargo ship ran aground off the coast of Tauranga. On the 5th of October 2011, the MV Rena collided with the Astrolab Reef. It struck at 21 knots, so it was at full speed. When it struck, it stripped off 50 metres of steel off the bottom of the boat. The bottom of the ship rolled up like the top of a sardine tin. It was carrying 1,300 containers and almost 2,000 tonnes of oil and fuel. Pristine white beaches were covered with gooey black oil and debris. The spill's been described as New Zealand's worst maritime environmental disaster ever. I just remember walking onto the beach and the smell and seeing a lot of people just wailing. Very emotional. It took a community response like no other to clean it all up. Each person an everyday hero. Everyone just had this real sense of togetherness and it was incredible. All differences were put aside. It didn't matter who you were, what your age were, where you came from. It was something that really touched everyone. Everyone who wanted to be involved in some way, shape or form. Well, a new documentary is called Taking Back Our Beach and it re reveals just how big that clean-up job was. Joining us, filmmaker Anton Steele and Professor Sarah Lockwood. Hi, hey guys. Um, Sarah, obviously huge environmental impact, but fair to say a big emotional impact as well for locals? Yeah, it w really was. I don't think there was anyone who was not affected by it. I mean, it was such a visual event and everyone felt very very hurt by it, and, um, and you see that in the documentary for sure. Mm. And Tom, what inspired you to get involved in the project? Um, what really inspired me was how the community came together. Um, one of my favourite quotes from the movie is that the arena really showed the power of individuals to make change for good. And it was just the, all these people, kind of disparate people coming together and um, coming together to save their, their beach kind of against, against the odds. And so you've premiered the film, what was the feedback like? Uh, we had a, an amazing screening last night at, at the Dock Edge. Um, yeah, it's, it's, there's a lot of emotions in the film. Um, there's a lot of really dark stuff, but there's also some really light, light stuff and some really funny moments. So, so alongside the tears, I was really kind of pleased to see people laughing at the right moments. Um, and, then, and there's a beautiful kind of a seed of forgiveness and people really reacted to that as well. Gorgeous. Um, they, they came, the volunteers kind of came together in all sorts of different ways. I mean, we're seeing lots of pictures of people digging, literally digging up sand. Um, I think there were thousands of people involved in the cleanup. But then there was like the people that were making little jumpers for birds and things. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, so they, um, uh, so a particular mother um, found out that there was all these penguins covered in oil. And what really kill, you know, what uh, kills penguins is hypothermia. You know, they'd get the oil on their skin, on their feathers, uh, and they'd be swimming like little naked bodies running around and swimming around in the water. So what can kill a lot of the penguins is hypothermia. So this wonderful woman um, decided that it would be a great idea if they knitted these penguins some sweaters. <laughs> And of course that went on the internet, and of course it went viral, yeah. and there were sweaters coming in from all around the world for the penguins. Yeah. Uh, tell us, it took, a, it took a couple of days, didn't it, for news of the spill to get out? Why was that? Um, I don't think people really kind of realised how big it was. I mean, it's, the Sun Live um, broke the story of the arena grounding on the reef, but I think to everybody it was just a ship on a reef. They didn't, they didn't really realise how big it was going to be until, you know, four days, you know, three or four days later once oil started leaking out. I mean, people could see the oil, but once they, you know, once a storm hit and the beaches were essentially, you know, ruined people realise the, the, the gravity of the situation. Sarah, there is a good news story here, right? The response of the locals is now something that's sort of seen around the world as a, a, an incredible example of community action. Mm, yeah, I, I mean, it has been a really positive thing to come out of a, an event that was really sh shrouded in this huge sense of momai and sadness and anger and frustration to some of the, the powers that be. So what a lot of the locals don't realise is that, you know, their, their response, both the formal and the formal volunteer aspect and a lot of the people that worked outside of that formal aspect but nevertheless contributed to that a volunteer clean-up, some of those, some of the data and research we've gathered from that has gone on to inform some huge things internationally yeah. mm -hmm. and in and, and the Pacific Islands as well. So that's something to be really proud of. Yeah, well, con containers as well as oil came off this. Anything weird wash up on the beaches? <laughs> Strange objects? Yeah, there was a lot of... Um, 
animal byproduct, um, offal, pelts. Oh. Um, so alongside the visual, um, you know, fright, there was also this intense smell that oh came at that time as well that just yeah. really, yeah, leached at the senses as well. And just Is it all cleaned up now? There's still a ship sitting under, you know, half a ship sitting under 60 metres of water on that reef. Um, and, you know, uh, many people feel that it should be gone. And um, let's just say the, the, the environment, it's not completely recovered. OK. More on the documentary, Taking Back Our Beach, it's called, and it's part of the Dock Edge Festival in Wellington. It's available online. And all the details for how you can watch it are on our Facebook page. Please thank Anton and Sarah.